quick overview of where things are at with Raspberry Pi right now. I mean, you're nine years in. Yeah, so we're nine years in. Uh, we've sold about 42 million um, Raspberry Pis. Uh, we've done a bit, did about 7 million in the last year. Um, so, so kind of, kind of, kind of quite high sales rates now. Um, about two years into Raspberry Pi four, um, which is, and Raspberry Pi four is kind of like it's, it's, a, it's the biggest step change. I, I guess technically, in, um, Raspberry Pi one to Raspberry Pi two was probably that's a huge change because you've gone from single core, core, core to quad core. But in terms of kind of user experience, really three plus three, three plus to four is the biggest jump that, that I've seen. So um, that's going, so that's been really well received um, by people. Um, we did compute module four. So we've kind of finished the, uh, the Pi 4 family now. So we have the Pi itself and then the compute module, the CM4 variant that we did last October. Um, and then this, in this generation, we've added a third form factor, which is the Pi 400. So the Pi and a keyboard, the kind of, the kind of consumer PC um, version of Raspberry Pi 4. Right. Um, and those are all going pretty well. Uh, Compute Module 4 is, has taken off a lot faster than previous Compute Modules. I think there's kind of like a, a, the feature set is really um, particularly, I guess a couple of things. One is it has wireless, so you have an option to have wireless on board, so you can, you know, you can just kind of leave wireless to us and we take care of it. Um, and then the other one's the power design. So um, previous compute modules, you had to provide them with sequenced several power rails yourself, all of which were sequenced properly coming up and coming down. Um, where this one, you just put five volts in and it makes its own rails. Um, I think those two things together have made it have, have, have made it much easier to work with. And so we've, we're selling kind of tens of thousands of CM4s a month um, at a point where it, it, with previous compute modules, we probably would have been doing hundreds to thousands. So it's really, we're seeing volume orders. Normally in your, for your first year, we're still in our first year, you, you'd just see um, a, a kind of prototyping orders, but we're seeing volume orders already. So yeah, it's, it's, it's busy. Yeah, yeah. And you know, on the compute module side, it's definitely the, the CM4 has, has caught my attention more than any other module uh, type uh, you know, offering yeah. that you know that I've seen previously. So it's, you know, it's I'm imagining on your side it must be even more visible than that because you know for for something that's sort of more professionally uh, oriented to start catching the eyes of the of our community. It's. Uh, mm. it's yeah, that's it. And so, so you're kind of seeing, so we're seeing this kind of faster than expected takeoff of CM4 while we're still seeing the ramp of CM3 and CM, CM3 plus. And so those are still uh, only now really starting to feed through into volume. That was CM, uh, CM3, I uh, get my ears right, CM3 plus was the tail end of 2018, I think. Um, and so we're a little over two years into that. And that's kind of my normal kind of idea of cadence for compute module wins. So that's ramping. We've done as many, we did as many compute modules in total across all the families. We did as many in the first seven months of this year as we did in the whole of last year. So that's quite a steep, it's still a, only a, a, a relative, a total business but it's a pretty steep uh, increase yeah yeah that's great yeah. plus silicon of course uh plus of course rp that's the other thing i guess that's that's going on uh pico continuing to do really well uh seeing lots and lots and lots of rp2040 boards so third-party boards built on our silicon um and uh, we, we've made an effort to get it in with JL jlc pcb of course it's everyone's favorite uh, uh chinese um uh, turnkey pcb pcba shop uh so we got parts in there we got parts out to our approved reseller network so we kind of did a lot of work to um we obviously had before we launched we spoke to uh, uh sparkfun adafruit Pimeroni, and arduino and so you had the kind of these kind of four people we already had a really strong relationship with but then after launch we've kind of we, we've tried to even though we're still in backlog on pico we've been kind of diverting about 15 percent of chip production um to uh to, to third parties now that's working out pretty well and yeah i mean at, at risk of uh of, of sidetracking the entire conversation the silicon conversation itself is a huge thing for yeah, yeah. For what i mean like this that's that's, I mean, it's a whole new thing. It's, yes, it's, a, it's, it's Franchise 2. We call it Franchise 2, right? Because it is, it is a new thing. 
where kind of everything we've done, we do lots of things, um, but kind of everything we've done up until then is kind of franchise one. It's kind of, um, it's, it's the single board computer and, and all of the stuff around it. So new versions of the single board computer, new form factors for the single board computer, accessories, complements, documentation, uh, but it's all the same thing basically. And this is the first thing we've done that, that isn't franchise one. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I don't know, uh... I, I, I'd be curious to hear how you guys speak about franchise two internally, but uh, you know, just from 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 my observations, looking at at what developed with uh, the RP twenty forty, with uh, you know, with, with uh, how many different companies and third parties have jumped on this, um, it seems like this could end up surpassing franchise one. Maybe, I think it could. Maybe I think it could. Yeah. I think it could. I mean, if you think the microcontroller market, it's a, it's a, it's a 28 billion unit a year business. It's an $18 billion a year business. And I, those two numbers are kind of interesting, right? Because they kind of imply that your average microcontroller only costs 60 to 70 cents. So you can really see that that microcontroller business is dominated by the ultra low end, really. Um, but the interesting thing about P2040 is it is a, it's a sub dollar, it's a sub dollar product. Um, and it, but it has this kind of like, uh, it has quite a lot of processing power and quite a lot of memory and it has some of this, this kind of flexible approach to, to IO. Um, I think for the middle, it's never going to be a, a dust microcontroller. Um, uh, I, I know I've, I, I, I have, have, I mean, have read it in, in Make, a, like a profile of some of like the cheapest microcontrollers you can buy. And you can buy a 10 cent microcontroller if you only need a few tens of bytes of, of, of RAM and a few hundred bytes of program storage. So it's never going to be one of those. And it's never going to be one of these things at the other end of the bell curve, which is... Um, which has got Cortex M7, these things they call crossover microcontrollers, things that are almost application processors that have so much, some of them even have A-class cores. I mean, I think uh, uh, microchip be ones that have A5s in them, right? So it's never gonna be those ends of the bell curve. And of course it, it's not a connected product, so it doesn't have a radio on it. Um, but there's an awful lot of stuff in the middle of that bell curve, which is just decent amount of processing power, unconnected product uses some, you know, if it needs to connect to the outside world, it uses some external product to do that. Um, I think it's a really competitive product in that space. Um, and, and they exist. That's the other thing, of course, this year, <laughs> this yeah. year, next year, by the sounds of it, um, they exist. We will have by the end of next, well, by the middle of next year, we will have produced 10, 20 million of these. Uh, and so kind of people who want microcontrollers they can get before 2023, may end up looking at it independently of whether it, I think it is a good product, but I think people will end up looking at it independently of whether it's a good product because it will exist. Yeah. So how have you guys managed these chip shortages? Like what, what, what are you doing? Um, we were lucky that we came into the year in a reasonable stock position. Um, we have, so of finished goods and of, and of chips. Um, and we've spent this year depleting those reserves. Um, you know, we've been doing, um, anywhere between six and 800,000 Raspberry Pis a month um, this year. So, so this year is really for us more, in terms of difficulty, I think this year is probably more of a story about um, demand, def having, more de having more demand than we were expecting rather than having less supply. We have about as much supply as we were expecting, but we have to eke that supply out to service probably 20 to 30% more demand. Um, and this year we'll do, last year we did 7 million, this year we'll do seven, seven and a half million if things go well in the second half, maybe seven and a half million units. But the really galling thing is there was a nine million unit year yeah. there for us. Uh, yeah. and, and that's what hurts is that we won't get that. Next year I think we'll be in, uh, we, we spent a lot of time early this year making sure that we had our ducks in a row for, for, for 2022. So I think 2022 actually shouldn't be too bad for us in, in franchise one. Okay, that's good to hear. And what was it that led you guys to even start thinking about doing a chip? What, what did you see that you said, hey, here's an opportunity or here's a need? Um, uh, I think, uh, what, the, the, the microcontroller world, um, I think that that was driven by uh, just a, a dissatisfaction with what was out there. Dissatisfaction with what was out there already. I mean, there's lots of cool chips, right? Um, but you know, not, maybe not quite the right, maybe nothing, nothing so exciting as to motivate you to go and make a whole new sort of product. Uh, and so it was, it was great that the team here were able to, to, to think of something a little bit different. Uh, and I was, I was super, super pleased with what they've done. You know, this is, this is, um, 
this is amazing. They're just amazing team of engineers here, and 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 you know they 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 they, they like a challenge. Yeah. Did you have to, I would imagine something like this, you need a certain skill set for it. So did you have to hire uh, for getting into what is becoming franchise two, as you're putting it? Um, yeah, um, there are, um, yeah, there are specific, there are specific skill sets involved in ASIC engineering, which are very different from the skill sets that are involved in, yeah. um, uh, that are involved in, um, uh, software engineering or board level hardware engineering right. um uh, and of course um i mean uh you know Ros raspberry pi has always been very actually very involved in 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 the chips that they used in all of its products um uh, and um and so yeah there, there are some great uh, cambridge is a great place to do this they call it silicon silicon fan you know uh it's like silicon Fa silicon valley but a lot flatter um and you know there are always interesting people here who, who yeah. want to work on interesting new stuff yeah. So part of that, I mean, this is part of what I'm also surprised about is uh, with the, you know, with, with what I would imagine would be the hiring needed for this, plus the, uh, the, the collaborations with Adafruit and Arduino and Sparkfun and Pimeroni. Um, when Pico and the RP2040 came out, it was a complete surprise to everybody. Mm -hmm. and, like they, and that must, it, it must have been under, it, 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 you guys must have been working on this for a long, long time, but. All was, of these, they, all of these things take a long time, right? I mean, yeah. that's, that's the big lesson of Raspberry Pi, right? Is, is everything takes a long time, you know? And, and, and it's uh, a lot of the long time, it's not, not just silicon software, board level stuff. Um, a lot of it's driven by the, the desire to make um, uh, a, um, uh, make things that can be made at scale. Uh, there is a huge difference, I think, between making things that can be made at um, prototype scale or even at small manufacturer scale, 10,000 unit scale. There's a huge difference between 10,000 unit scale and million unit scale um, in terms of how, how much attention to detail you need to put into the upfront, into the design, because otherwise you just drown in in manufacturing issues or support issues, product quality issues. Um, uh, I know it's been a sort of a lot of, a lot of lessons over the years um, in, you know, if you, if you, if you cut corners, uh, you, you, you spend more time in the end. Um, so all these, all these things, all these things take a long time. Um, and, uh, but it's good. I mean, yeah, the, the results are, the results are worthwhile. <laughs> you know, the results are worthwhile. Um, and, and it's always the case at Raspberry Pi that the, the, the things people can see, because uh, the team grows, um, the things that people can see that are launched were always done by a subset of the team that exists. Um, uh, and, and so, so, you know, very many of the people here are working on things that, that will appear in the future. Um, and, and, um, you know, something like Raspberry Pi 4 in terms of the hardware engineering for Raspberry Pi 4 was uh, the board level hardware engineering for Raspberry Pi 4 uh, was only a very, a very small handful of people. It was only two or three people. Uh, quite, a, quite a much larger software team, obviously. But, um, you know, some of the biggest runners have the smallest teams. Uh, Compute Module 4 was one person. Wow. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have guessed that. Yeah, it's, it's kind of fun. So it's Dom a guy called Dominic Plunkett, a fairly, rec a fairly recent uh, joiner, and uh, it's his first product for us i think um uh the fun one of course was simon martin who was a um who who joined us quite a long time ago now and and worked on a number of very long duration um projects that all of a sudden then all kind of came to fruition at once the two big ones being high quality camera um last year and then pi 400 uh, they were both simon martin products uh, he'd done mouse and keyboard he did mouse and keyboard obviously which are kind of obviously a run up to pi 400 uh then then hq camera then and they all because of the way that because of the way the the, the time scales work they all kind of end up bunched up together and suddenly like every product we launch is a simon martin product for about six months <laughs> yeah that's uh it, it's always funny for me to think about things from the uh, you know, perspective of publishing, which, you know, is what, what I spend my day to day doing and thinking of an editor bringing in uh, various authors and they're working on things and, uh, you know, lining up a series of pieces all from one author and, you know, kind of like the, the Tom and Martin type thing here. And then yeah. you know, another, another editor with another author coming in with another thing. So, um, I don't understand how you guys don't go mad, you know, because I've always, but particularly people who work on dailies or dailies or weeklies, is just it has to be done. 
like yeah. you know next tuesday's times of london hasn't been written yet uh right. and yet it has to be ready by the end of monday yeah. uh and and i'd go insane i mean the nice thing with at least in our business is is you know if your product isn't ready you can you know you, unless you're desperately short of money or something if your product isn't ready you can just wait until it is ready and then launch it but not not that way in publishing really <laughs> right, right, yeah. Well, yeah thankfully on my side we're not a daily because i agree i would go insane i don't think there'd be any sleep yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, and there's always exactly the right amount of news as well to fill a, to fill the daily. And it's strange that it's, isn't it odd? You know, yeah. there's never a little extra news or never a little bit of empty space. It's always exactly the right amount of news. It's, it's very fortunate. Yeah. So uh, okay, so to transitioning from uh, you know I've got I've got a Pico right here uh, with mm. uh, the, you know the the, the the nice packaging that uh, you guys set up. It's brilliant to. Uh, I, I love computers on a reel. <laughs> we have them in the shop. We have a reel in the shop, and you come in. I want two. I want two yards of computers, please. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. I mean, it's really it's great. Uh, but then uh, you know, there's a there's a new thing here, and uh, you know, nobody's really seen this before. But um, you know, this is uh, mm. this is this is pretty fancy. And um, tell me about this. What, what am okay. I so that is a Raspberry Pi zero two W. Uh, so it says zero two on the board, but it's zero two W. Um, it, so it's a successor to the zero W, um, which was itself the successor to the zero. So zero was our was our five dollar Raspberry Pi, and zero is a fun product because um, uh, you can sort of see. So I, I, I still I, I still love zero more I think than anything else we've ever done um, because it's sort of us challenging ourselves to keep being aggressive after we had some success. Um, so, so you can sort of see what Raspberry Pi has done is it's used Moore's law in a different way from the way people normally use Moore's law. So people normally pick a price point and they use the declining specific cost of computing power um, to fill that price point up with progressively more um, uh, computing every year. Um, and what, Raspberry Pi 1 did was to say, well, can we take a PC from 10 years ago and then use Moore's Law to squash that PC down to, to a much lower price point? Um, and we did that. Um, and then we launched Raspberry Pi 2 in 2015, so three years later. Uh, and lo and behold, what did we do? We picked our price, uh, $35, and we filled it up with a bunch of computing. Um, and Because uh, that's what everyone always tells you to do, right? That's what your customers always say they want. Um, and we, there was, um, Raspberry Pi 2 was a great product, um, but there was a little bit of a feeling after we launched it that we'd kind of fallen into this trap uh, of being very conventional again. And, and then zero is the output of then saying, well, can we... Um, uh, can we uh, um, uh, challenge ourselves again um, to 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 um, to squeeze uh, um, uh, the same performance and into lower into a lower cost structure? So your thirty-five dollar uh, Raspberry Pi one gets stripped down in a variety of ways and repackaged as a five-dollar computer. Then Zero W comes along about uh, about eighteen months later, um, and and that was very popular. And of course now is the most popular Zero product. So about ninety percent of Zero that's ten dollars. Yeah, it's a lot of fun for five for five extra bucks, right? So ninety percent of zeros that sell uh, are are zero Ws, um, but still people ask for more performance. And zero is a Raspberry Pi one, right? So compared to a Raspberry Pi four, it's got about a fortieth the performance of, of a Raspberry Pi uh, of a Raspberry Pi four, um, and um, there are things you can't do with it. Um, and so people ask us, well, can we have another zero? And the, because the problem we have with zero is that it's very dependent. The design is very dependent on that. SOC that we use, the 2835 SOC that we use, um, which is a, um, a POP. It has a POP package. So you have the, the SOC, and then you have the DRAM stacked on top of it. Um, and we don't have any other POP chips. So if you look at a Raspberry Pi 2, Raspberry Pi 3, 3 Plus 4, um, they all have external memory. So they all have memory which is mounted on the PCB. There's no room on that PCB. If you want to, certainly if you want to stay single-sided or really actually, I think even a double-sided design would be quite challenging um, uh, uh, to achieve. Um, and so we're kind of backed into a corner. Uh, and so it took us a long time to figure out how to get out of that corner. And um, uh, zero, zero, two is the, zero two is the product which is enabled by RP3A0, which you'll see is written on top of the chip, uh, which is, um, uh, that's, a, that, that's, a, that's, that's not silicon innovation, that's packaging innovation. So effectively what that is, is that's a uh, BCM 2710A1 die. So the same chip that's used in Raspberry Pi 3, the same piece of silicon that's used in Raspberry Pi 3, 
put inside a package with some LPDD, an LPDDR2 memory die to make a finished object. Uh, and then on the outside, it has a logo, an RP3. Um, uh, and that's what it is. So you could sort of see what you're, what you're holding as being kind of a, a, a slightly downclocked, so it's a 1 gigahertz versus 1.2 gigahertz, slightly downclocked Raspberry Pi 3 with half as much memory and a smaller, and a smaller um, uh, uh, not, not the same set of um, accessories around it on the board. Uh, and it's 15 bucks. So we have actually had to grow the price in order to do that. But it's about 10 times the performance of, a, for a multi-threaded benchmark, it's about 10 times the performance of a, of a, of a zero. The Pi 3 was where people started looking at Raspberry Pi as not just maybe an educational product, but something that could do serious work. You could turn this yeah. into a, you know, potentially a desktop device that you, that you, that you use daily. And yes. so to go from, from that to, you know, to, to this size is at, for 15 bucks. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of fun, right? So, uh, so for me, kind of Raspberry Pi three is the first Raspberry Pi. Yeah, we've always called ourselves a PC company. We've always aspired to be a PC company. Raspberry the one that we, which becomes, and they've always been viable PCs for some subset of the things people do with PCs. Um, Raspberry Pi three, if if perhaps Raspberry Pi four is the one that finally delivers uh, on. Uh, yeah, for all but the, the, the most hardcore of users, um, it, it's a PC. So you can run a web browser on it um, uh, very, very comfortably. Raspberry Pi 3 is probably the one that delivers the same thing, but without the web browser. So pretty much anything else that you want to do, as long as it isn't run that one horrible, like, uh, memory-hungry, processor-hungry application, um, pretty much anything else you want to do, you can do on a Raspberry Pi 3. And that's why it's exciting to bring that level of performance to the Zero family. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, and so you're you're saying here. So this just to just to look at it closely. Um, here's the zero two W. Mm -hmm. This is the original zero uh, non W. Yes, indeed. And, and so, you know, looking at them side by side here, you can mm -hmm. see this is the uh, the with the RP three A zero. Three A zero. Yes, that's, that's right. And that's that's this guy right here. Mm. And that's what we call a that's what we call a SIP. So it's a system, system in package. Um, so it's this multiple silicon die stacked in, or sometimes stacked in package. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, and then one of the big differences that I'm seeing here, we've got uh, on this one, this is, this is the original chip here mm -hmm. that you were saying is a, a stacked design. That yeah, so that's actually two chips. So what you see, what you see there is two packets. So if you sort of, I'm not sure if you turn it on its side, you might be able to see, it's a little bit hard to see. There are actually yeah. two, two, it's a little sandwich. There are two <laughs> layers, they are slightly different colors. Um, so there's a top package, which has got LPDA, I think, written on it, uh, which is effectively Micron. Um, and then you've got the bottom, underneath is the bottom package, which is the processor package, the BCM2835 package. And so those, when you're assembling that, those are two separate pick and place steps. Um, and it's actually a slightly specialized, uh, POP is a slightly specialized assembly step in that um, when you only have a single layer of components, what you can do is screen print solder, um, a solder paste onto the board. Obviously, the question is, how do you get solder paste onto the top uh, of the, the package? So you, you, you pick and place that onto the board. How do you get solder paste on top? The answer is you take the top package, you pick it up, and you have a little tray with solder paste in, this little round tray with solder paste in of a very finely calibrated depth. And then you're, you dip it in and a little solder paste adheres to each of the balls uh, on the bottom of the top package and then you put it down and there's a little um the uh there's a little kind of um uh, arm that goes across the uh, uh the radially across the this, this this disc and every time you do a dip the thing rotates through 360 degrees and the little arm uh, smooths the solder paste down to this very finely defined depth yeah. um so 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 there's there's some subtlety there there's not much subtlety in the packaging design it's just two chips um uh the the, the bottom package obviously has pads on top of it which is a bit unusual um uh, but then there's some subtlety in the pick and place what we've done really here is we've moved the subtlety into the packaging so you now have two die inside one package yeah got it and so one of the things that i thought was interesting so again back to the to the pico uh it, when you launched this a few months back, uh, one of the things that really caught everyone's attention was putting those state machines, the PIO uh, functionality mm. into it. Uh, something that most people really weren't familiar with, uh, were excited to see, especially uh, in something this size and also at a $4 price point, uh, which mm. 
it's uh, it was is, is pretty amazing. But uh, it, you know, so this when this showed up, and uh, and I really got to see it and take a good look at the uh, the, the zero two W. Uh, you know, the first thing that popped in my head is, what kind of surprises does this have baked into it? Are there, are there any any uh, any other you know, elements? <laughs> the surprises, there's no surprises, right? Um, <laughs> the surprises that is BCM twenty seven ten A one in there. That really is. The, so that's uh, I think it's an important surprise. It sounds it sounds uh, it sounds mundane, really, um, but it is a Raspberry Pi. Yeah. Um, it yeah. runs all the Raspberry Pi software. The software it is almost indistinguishable uh, to the system software um, from um, uh, uh, from uh, a Raspberry Pi three, yeah. um, and so so yeah, upsides and downsides. Um, you know, upside total software compatibility, which is something we care about enormously. Uh, downsides, yeah, well, I wasn't able to squeeze a PIO, PIO state machines into the GPI subsystem. There is no analog input. There is no PIO. Um, but, you know, no, there's, no, there's none of that fancy stuff. There's no real time. Uh, there's none of the cool real time stuff that, uh, that, that, Pico, that Pico has in it. Um, I guess the other thing that you'll notice when you look at it is there's a can over the wireless. Yeah. Uh, so there's a silver can over the wireless. And I think this is probably, this reflects our another aspect of, of our evolution um, since um, uh, 2016. So Raspberry Pi 3 was the first product that we shipped in, in 2016 with wireless. Um, and we've evolved um, to uh, uh, from putting wireless on the, hey, we put wireless on the board. And what you realize is you put wireless on the board, and then if someone wants to take your product and integrate it into another product, they have to basically with some other circuitry, um, they have to basically start from scratch. Particularly in in, in FCC from in, in North America, um, they have to start from scratch uh, and, and completely reconform that product, uh, do a complete conformance run. One of the reasons why people use Wi-Fi modules, you know, go and buy a Murata Wi-Fi module or something. One of the reasons why people use Wi-Fi modules is that they hide that from you. Um, so you can just treat them as a, as, a, as a modular component and you only need to worry about the unintentional radiation and susceptibility of the rest of your design. And you just say, and, and that box does radio and that's nothing to do with me. And the function of the can is, is actually not to um, hide the, uh, the outside world from emissions from the radio is to hide the radio from interference from the outside world so that you can so that you can make that modular claim that what what happens inside this box is unaffected by what other changes i've made in the system now the fun thing about raspberry pi 3 plus and raspberry pi 4 and raspberry pi compute module um, is that they are all modular products so they all have cans over their wi-fi so from an FC, fcc perspective all of our products post raspberry pi 3 plus are fcc radio modules uh, like but they also do other things like have a whole computer on them um but but they have the same integration rules um and so that was the thing where you know you do get people integrating zero w into products but they have to do as with raspberry pi 3 they have to do uh, more work um more expensive work uh, at the fcc level and so the aspiration with this product was well look let's as we do with everything now let's make it a radio module and then it's very easy to integrate so are, have you been uh, have you been surprised at the ways? So speaking of these integrations, and I mean, obviously you're 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 accommodating uh, the people using Raspberry Pi in uh, you know in commercial grade products by you know, especially by having mm -hmm. the, the, the compute module line. But thinking back to 2012, when you know the first Pi came out, versus what the way that they've been adopted by uh, by everyone, uh, you know what. Are you surprised? Yeah, we are surprised, and and we and it happened very early on. So I, I think you can sort of see see the story for Raspberry Pi is like we we had these educational aspirations, but if you look at the people who bought them in two thousand twelve, they weren't kids, uh, and they weren't perfect. They weren't engineering companies. They were hobbyists, enthusiasts, you know, your, your, your readers, right? Um, uh, but the interesting thing about that demographic is a lot of them are educators um, and a lot of them are professional engineers. And so kind of like it's been the root of the tree for Raspberry Pi that by, because we were popular with those guys, those are the people who took us into schools. Those are the people who took us into their workplace. And when their boss said, hey, go build me a thing, they're like, hey, I, I know how to do this. 
exactly the same story with Arduino, right? I mean, it's exactly the way that that the kind of Arduino has 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 been has been successful, and that's been one of the great things about this year is is, is having ability to kind of work really, really, really closely with Arduino on the uh, on the the, the twenty forty based uh, products. Um, so so yeah, it's surprising. And last year, seven million Raspberry Pis, well over half of those were into industrial applications, um, and uh, and that's that's ranging from big giant companies um, to this Maker Pro world um that we, we've always been interested in i guess that we're investing a lot of effort this year in trying to sustain was back to franchise two um we've been targeting what rp what spare rp2040s we have outside of our own needs and the four close in guys really to the kind of like make a prototype businesses who can't make anything this year right <laughs> you know um so 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 there's kind of it's it's an interesting mix. It's interesting volume mix. You know, we have hundred thousand unit customers, um, and we have a handful of those. We probably have fewer than ten people who are buying hundred thousand units off us a year. Um, but then we'll have thousands that are buying a thousand um, uh, off us off us a year. So it's a very very broad very broad base. Yeah. Yeah. So do you imagine uh, with a with a, a new zero? Uh, you know, where does this slot in? Uh, if, what you see um it's so it's a um I, with, with the can it's designed to be it's designed to be integrated um i i think a uh probably one observation has been that when we talk about you know we we sold um something like half a million compute modules last year but we did about four million industrial units so so seven eighths of our industrial business was SBCs, not SOMs, right? Um, and, and I guess we've learned that people are very keen. <laughs> people go a long way to avoid making a baseboard. Um, yeah, the, lo lots of you. Know, we talk about the Internet of Big Things. Um, that there are there are lots of objects. You know, people think about the Internet of Things and they think about th um, thermostats and, uh, and light switches and stuff. But actually, a lot of the things that people connect these days are, are air conditioners, you know, HVAC units, and, and, and big pieces of factory equipment. Um, and those objects, actually, an SBC may well be the right platform um, for that um, because you don't have to cut a baseboard. You basically have a have a hat or, or you're just a wiring loom. Sometimes you just have wires going down onto, soldered down onto, onto a board. Um, so what we think you know, zero, um, zero two W is going to be a a platform for those kind of, on the industrial side. It's a platform for those kind of applications where people want, uh, you know, they want a kind of more performance than they get from zero. They don't need the peripheral sets, the wired Ethernet, um, big USB, uh, multi multi USB ports that you get from a three or a three plus. They don't need the performance of a four, um, uh, and they want a lower cost point and they want a more integrable. Um, uh, uh, something that they something that they can integrate into a smaller into a smaller space, and it's probably our smallest integral integra measured by board area. It's probably fractionally smaller than CM4 and CM3, um, so it's probably about our smallest in integrable, easily integrable product. Got it. How do you guys decide which boards to make? You know, so you know, you're talking about Dominic and Simon. Uh, and Paul, but what, you know, what's what's that? What's that decision tree like? Mm. Oh yeah, this is a Simon product, by the way. <laughs> um, actually, both the SIP and the board itself are a Simon product. Um, so you talk about like what sorts of people do you need? Actually, you need people who can do lots of stuff. Uh, and, and Simon, Simon's probably uh, at one extreme in terms of, of his ability to do lots of things. Um, so uh, how do we decide what to make? Uh, we make the things we want. <laughs> so I, and that's weird. Well, I mean, it's another thing that sounds flippant, but um, uh, it, it's. Um, there's a sort of a traditional marketing way of deciding what products to make um and it is um i don't like it <laughs> um because you you go and you speak to customers and you ask them what they want um and i know of course we listen to our customers but um it, it's important to not overemphasize what customers want because otherwise what you can do is you can sort of start to kind of look at all your customers and say well these people want this thing these people want this thing and i'll make a product and these people want this thing and if i make a product which is like this i can cover all of those all of those sets of 
functionality with with one product that's great i'll do that and what you end up doing is you can make a product which is kind of in the middle which interpolates between the needs of a bunch of different people and actually it pleases nobody uh you know you either make a thing which doesn't have the function i doesn't actually have the functionality people want or you end up making a thing which has loads of stuff piled onto one design so it's expensive so everyone's sad because they're paying for functionality they don't need um the nice thing about making products that you um that you want is it guarantees at least one person wants the thing that you have made. Um, and um, I think the other fruit company, there's a, there's a theory about the other fruit company, right? Um, that they, that in their classic, in their classic era, they basically made what Steve wanted. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and it turned out a lot of people wanted what Steve wanted. Um, and so they were successful. Um, and so I think, you know, we're, we're, we're geeky engineers and we, we, we want, particular things we make those things and hey, hey a lot of other geeky engineers like the same stuff that we that we like so that's that's how that's literally how we do it you know it, so it's funny that you bring up apple uh because it's hard to not start to see some uh you know some 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 similarities uh in the in the journeys that you guys are, are going on but um do you how do you how do you how do you look at the at what they've done and think about you know where raspberry pi is now um, well, obviously they're an amazing company, and I'm 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 using a piece of their equipment to talk to you to talk to you right now. Oh, uh, and they, they they do they do great stuff, and they they have a they have a, a very admirable sensibility in terms of in terms of engineering. You know, they they, they are very very good at engineering. Um, and um, I think probably the call out one similarity is this kind of full stack approach um that obviously they yeah they have now famously a, a full stack approach that goes all the way through to to very 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 advanced with m1 um very 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 advanced um uh, semiconductors uh, all the way up to product design that kind of worrying about that's kind of nand we call it nand to tetris sometimes you know they, they think there is a course isn't there called nand to tetris which tries to teach you a little bit about everything that's in the stack between a nand gate and writing tetris and javascript um and and you know being able to worry about about um, uh, the NAND gates on the chips and um, the uh, and the color of the icons on the desktop um, it is a wonderful experience, uh, one that I very much enjoyed. Um, I think what you find is Raspberry Pi tends to do these things somewhat, some, some, sometimes a little bit more through partnership rather than uh, the kind of brute force approach that you can take if you if you're a trillion dollar company. Um, so yeah, Raspberry Pi has uh, yeah works with partners to do these things. You know the the silicon. You know the, the there are two pieces of silicon in that SIP on that on that board, and they come from two different partners um, with whom Raspberry Pi has, has obviously an incredible relationship. Um, uh, and then Raspberry Pi is kind of bringing to the table the thing that it's best at, and often the thing it's best at is good engineering, but also having relationships with people um uh, and so that's that that sip is the product of uh two relationships and a good engineer um uh, and so so being able you can do you can do the full stack thing several ways uh, and i think we are finding interesting new ways to do that um yeah nice uh i, I am curious um next year will be 10 years for Raspberry. Yes. And of course, wonderf wonderfully, it can't quite be 10 years because we launched on the 29th of February. So it can, it can never be quite 10 years. <laughs> it can be eight years or 12 years, but it can never quite be 10. But we, I think we're going to declare it. I think we have thought about this and we are going to declare it on the 28th, um, uh, uh, which, is, which, is a, which, is, which is quite nice. So, that's, so we, we decided to round down rather than rounding up. Uh, so, you know, one of the things, as I was thinking about that, I thought, you know, 10 years tends to be a, a number of significance for, for everyone, you know, a decade, it's, it's, a, it's a big thing. But when you talk about, you know, the, 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 the second part of the Raspberry Pi name being uh, mathematical content that is, you know, it's its own thing. Uh, I don't know if, if 10 years really has that same significance or if, you know, if, if you're yeah. thinking about that. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I would, I would love to have a product announcement for, 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 10, for 10 years and I'm, and I'm not going to. Um, and that's sad. I mean, I could. I I wanted it badly enough. I almost suggested we slip that one um, to 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 be a. But it would have been synthetic. Actually, we 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 never we, we try never to be synthetic in that way. Um, so we we you know, we launch as soon as we can. We launch as soon as we got some. Um, and uh, so so yeah. Um, I don't know what it's going to feel like because it was a very strange day. Launch day was a very. 
a very odd day. You mentioned pie, of course. We, we didn't really ship any product for the first couple of weeks. And if we delayed exactly two weeks, then of course we could have, we could have announced on pie day. <laughs> um, so, so maybe that was a missed, maybe that was a missed opportunity. Um, uh, but it's going to be, it's going to be strange. And launch day, you know, obviously knocking over our partners' websites, um, doing a hundred thousand, we did sold a hundred thousand Raspberry Pis on the day. Um, and then spent six months making the Raspberry Pis to sell to the first. I remember the partners sending out T-shirts to about after about three months. They started sending out T-shirts to all the people who'd ordered them to say, "Hang on, look, guys, we're doing our best." You know, and even though there was then in a, by that point there was enough volume, there were tens of thousands of units. There was enough volume that people were they were showing up on Twitter. You were still only at a point where people who had ordered before eleven a.m. Uh, which is basically no Americans because no one was awake. Um, uh, um, uh, people who'd ordered before 11 a.m. UK time had got them. It was still quite wearing for people who'd ordered them at two in the afternoon or who got up first thing in California and ordered them, and that was 5 p.m. UK time. Um, so I don't know what it's going to feel like having an actual solid decade under under our belt. It's still fun, right? That's the thing. It's fun. And if it wasn't fun, I'd stop doing it. And I'm kind of amazed because I have no real patience for anything. Um, and I've never done anything for more than four years. Um, and to, to have a thing that I've done continuously for a decade is, is and of course that we were doing for several years before we launched, um, is, it just seems outrageous, really. Yeah, it's, I, it's significant, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's, yeah. There'll be some champagne. I mean, there'll be a party. Um, there'll be a party and there'll be champagne. Uh, but but sadly, there won't be a Raspberry Pi 5. So. Well, we'll be looking for it at whatever it does come out because everybody, you know, it's it's one of the one of the great things is just how much enthusiasm and excitement uh, the community has for anything that you guys are putting out. And I think mm. uh, it, it's just a testament to what good work you've been doing. Yeah. And it's and it's a testament to the, that there was this community there. I mean, I was like, what's the surprise with Raspberry Pi? The surprise is that is that there was a community there waiting, and there was demand waiting. I mean, people talk about category defining products, and uh, I mean, the iPads, of course, are a great example of a category defining product that you can't. It's the other good thing about the, the this weird approach to marketing, which is you 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 couldn't have focus grouped the iPad into existence. Um, because y you can't go out and ask people if they want a product that doesn't exist yet. All you can do is make it and then and see if people go for it. Um, and Raspberry Pi is like that, right? We, we made it. Um, and sometimes you drop a throw, just throw a dart, uh, and you hit a, a pool of demand. You hit a kind of a place where there was a lot of demand, latent demand, sat there, uh, and nobody knew about it because there was no products there tapping it. Um, and then you throw your dart, and your dart hits the pool of demand, and bang, 100,000 units. Um, and of course, you know, this maker community, I mean, the community that's around. I remember going to make a fair in, um, in um, my first make a fair in New York in um, the autumn of 2011 with a Raspberry Pi prototype and a monitor, and I got a, a trestle table, um, and we just set it up running Quake 3, which is one of the things that it could do very well. Um, and this just this crowd of people gathered around. But the the uh, the next to us, the trestle table next to us was this kid who had an Arduino, and he'd automated a uh, a doll's house, lights light switches in a doll's house, right. and that was the first time that I really felt that we would. That there was a community out there waiting for it. That there was that there were people that it might, and also on the educational side, that it might work. That there were young, not just a community, but a community of children who wanted this. Um, and so it's it's yeah, it's been a, it's been a wild ride. Ten years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's at least another ten years of fun. I think maybe or maybe I'll just wake up one day and it won't be fun anymore, and I'll stop and do something else. But but it, it, I can sort of see. I mean, it's very hard to see more than ten years in our industry at the moment because because there's a lot of um, discontinuous, particularly the end of Moore's Law, a lot of discontinuous change going on. Um, but I can sort of see a decade. I mean, I can see 2030 from here. Um, and, 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 and that's, that's kind of fun. Uh, yeah.